glucagon or trade name glucagen. Glucagon is actually a naturally occurring hormone in our body and it's produced by the alpha cells of the pancreas. What it does and what you need to think about with glucagon is you need to think the exact opposite of insulin. Where insulin helps to lower blood glucose, glucagon actually helps to raise it. What it does is when it's released from the pancreas, it causes the liver to convert stored glycogen into glucose, which is then released into the bloodstream, thereby raising the the level of blood glucose. So the reason we would give glucagon is in severe cases of hypoglycemia. Okay, blood sugars are really low. We're going to give glucagon to try to raise the blood sugars. And it's going to have that same effect. It's going to cause glycogen to be converted back into glucose within the liver. And then it's going to raise our blood glucose levels. It can also be given as an antidote to beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. The action is it really, like we said, it stimulates production of glucose by converting glycogen into glucose. Its therapeutic class is hormone and its pharmacologic class is pancreatic. So obviously, if you have a patient that you have to give glucagon to, they probably had a, an extremely low blood sugar, 20, 15, 10, 12, whatever. So it's really important that you're closely monitoring your patient's blood glucose level. If possible, you'd probably need to get them to an ICU where they can be very closely monitored every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, what their blood glucose level is. You would also want to assess your patient's neurostatus. Okay, When a patient has extremely low blood sugars, their neurostatus is going to decline. Okay, once it gets below like 20, a patient can go into a, 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 a hypoglycemic coma. And so we'd really need to monitor their, their neurostatus very closely as we're monitoring their blood sugars. We want to monitor the serum glucose levels, like I said, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, and getting them to a normal glucose level, getting them up over 60, over 100, where we need them to be. We would want to teach the patient signs of hypoglycemia. If this is a patient who has hypoglycemia often, we really want to to help them understand what the signs are so they can kind of see this impending hypoglycemia. Now, this can actually cause anaphylaxis, okay? So it's important to monitor your patient for any signs of or any sign of anaphylactic reaction. So this is a really important medication to keep in mind because as patients become critically ill and they become sick, their blood sugars can be all over the place. And if we don't have them on continuous blood sugar checks, it can occur that the patient's blood sugars can really bottom without us even knowing, okay? Especially if they haven't eaten in a while, they're not eating much, they can really get low blood sugars. And so this would be a good one to keep in mind that we could give uh, glucagon to help try to raise their blood sugars in this type of case. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.